you've been standing in line to ride a roller coaster for about an hour. Finally, you've made it into the station and are now faced with another decision. Which row do I get in line for? Like always, the front row is already full, so you start to glance down the train and spot an empty row near the middle. As you are standing in that line, you begin to wonder why everyone is waiting in the front row. Could it really be that much better? Well, in this video, let's discuss where the best place to ride a roller coaster. Before we dive into the video, we need to understand that every roller coaster is going to be different. Sometimes the front row provides the best experience, while other rides you head towards the back. There's even some rare circumstances where I'll recommend the middle, but we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about the various factors that come into play when picking out the best seat. The view. This one is rather obvious, sitting up in the front row will provide you the best view. Nothing should be inhibiting your eyesight, this is especially true with inverted roller coasters. In fact, the front row on an inverted roller coaster is really the only place to ride if you want to see what's coming your way. If you have a problem not being able to see what element is coming next, then I recommend sitting up front. Speed. Okay, at first this may not make sense, because every row will be traveling at the same speed. But if you want to feel the full force of the wind crashing against your face, then you're going to want to sit up in the front row. Even going back one row will change the entire experience. I can attest to that with Fury 325. When I sat in the front row, I felt like my skin could be ripped right off my face. But when I moved back just one row, the sheer force was reduced, providing a lesser experience. Airtime. This is probably the most tricky of all the factors. For the majority, I'd say that the back row will always be the best place to go. However, there are a good chunk of coasters where this rule doesn't apply. When we watch Candemonium, a B&M hypercoaster, fly up its first airtime hill, those sitting up front will experience the strongest airtime here, and it should be sustained for the rest of the hill. The back row will have the strongest airtime starting at this point, but should already be experiencing some nice floaters starting near the beginning of the hill. If you are riding in the middle, the strongest airtime will start somewhere around here, but will never reach the extremes of the front or back rows. During the first drop, the back row will always provide the best dose of airtime, so if you want to experience the best of this first element, sit towards the back of the train. On El Toro, a prefabricated wooden coaster located at Six Flags Great Adventure, I'd argue that the front row provides slightly better airtime post first drop. But again, that first drop is the best airtime moment of the entire ride. Diamondback, a B&M hyper at Kings Island, delivers an all-around best experience in the back row. Because the trains are so long, riders in the back will get yanked over every airtime hill, providing good floater and or ejector airtime. Roller coasters that keep low to the ground, providing quick pops of airtime, I usually agree that the front row is the best place to ride. Mystic Timbers, also at Kings Island, this wooden roller coaster stays low to the ground, pummeling riders with small pops of airtime. I felt like the front row had the best airtime, but I know some will argue that the back rows are just as good. Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion is another great example. This roller coaster stays low to the ground. All the airtime is best experienced in the front row. However, the back row is still good, and I do know a couple that prefer the back rows on Twisted Timbers. If there is anything to take away from this category on airtime, the back row will always be the best for the first drop, but the front row is competitive and in some situations better during the rest of the ride. Ride Smoothness where you sit will greatly affect the overall roughness of the ride. Some roller coasters won't matter because it's butter smooth, or on the other hand, it's just a terrible ride. Sitting closer to the front should provide a smoother ride experience, but there is another aspect you need to take into consideration, and that's wheel placement. Try to avoid sitting over top the wheel. If the train has cars that support three rows, head for the second row. It will be smoother than the other two. If the train is four across, then sit in one of the middle seats of any row. This brings up another important factor. You decide which row to sit in, but what seat do you pick? Well, every coaster can be different. Some trains feature rows that are two across, four across, six across, eight, and even ten across. There are the extremely rare three and seven across, but I haven't ridden either, so not sure how much they vary from the others. The typical two across trains, in most situations, both left and right seats will be the same. 
There are the exceptions like Twisted Timbers, a roller coaster that only does right turns. That means during every turn, those seated on the right side will be closer to the ground while those on the left side will be higher off the ground. Overall, don't sweat it, either side will be fine. A four across train is where things start to get interesting. Sit on an outer seat to get the strongest whip during maneuvers. Both sides of the train will be slightly different. The middle of the row seats will be smoother and have less head banging, just something else to keep in mind. Getting into these larger trains with six, eight, or 10 across, the whip sensation will only be stronger in these outer seats. Dive coasters, which are basically the only roller coaster with these wide trains, sitting in an outer seat will also have you over past the edge of the track, so it's almost like riding on a wing coaster. Overall, the same rules apply to these trains. Middle seats are less intense and smoother, while the outer seats more intense and possibly at the cost of ride smoothness. Before I wrap this video up, I mentioned a couple rare coasters where the middle row is best. Now, I've only ridden this roller coaster pre partial hybrid conversion, and that's Lightning Rod. I really enjoyed the front row, but honestly, the middle of the train provides the best overall airtime. The first two airtime hills seem to be best experienced in the middle rows. After that, honestly, I don't know if the front or the back was better. I still prefer the front over the back of the train. Another roller coaster I prefer in the middle row is a Boomerang. The only reason I say this is because it's slightly smoother. So, where is the best place to ride a roller coaster? Well, it depends. I recommend riding every roller coaster near the front and back just to get the full experience of the ride. Overall, I almost always head to the back of the train, but there are the rare exceptions like dive, inverted, and wing coasters where I prefer to go straight to the front of the train. Also, don't be afraid to ride a roller coaster in the middle of the train. I know that some coaster enthusiasts will avoid sitting in a middle row at all cost, but sometimes the middle row does provide a good experience, so don't be afraid to check out all the rows of the train. A good roller coaster gives you variety, meaning a ride up front is supposed to be different from a ride in the back, and creates an incentive to get right back in line. So, where is your favorite place to sit on a roller coaster? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click on that like button, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. That way you continue to get great content brought to you by X-Scream Thrills.